Hello, my name is Tony Nichols and I am the Federal Programs Director for Nicholas County Schools and I'd like to welcome you to some of our uh, learning sessions that we're going to be doing. Uh, we have several of our finest teachers in the county that are, have volunteered to do some reading and some math lessons especially. Um, we'd like to thank SCTV for um, broadcasting these sessions. Um, we're hoping to continue them over the summer as well. And we are hopeful that this is gonna be a, a big help to those uh, students that we have that, that don't have a whole lot of uh, network access. Um, these sessions will be broadcast uh, through Chantel, so we'd like to also thank them for their, their help and support. Um, for those who don't have Chantel service, uh, you can check the SCTV uh, website and Facebook page and they'll be running these sessions as well. So we hope that these will be helpful for our students and help us continue to um, show progress and achievement for our students. In this video, we're going to look again at the numbers 1 through 10. This time the focus will be on how many each number represents. We've talked before about the numbers that we see, that is the numerals, the numbers we say and hear, but now we're going to focus on how many. After all, counting is more than just saying a set of numbers or writing a list of numbers. We count because we want to know how many. The first thing I would suggest you do is find out exactly where your child is with counting. So here are a few things you can try to find that out. Set out a small group of objects. In this case, I have four. You could put them in a line or you could put them in some kind of a pattern. Ask your child to tell you how many there are. Notice if your child just knows it's four, if you see him counting, if you see touching and moving as he counts, all of these things are fine. They're just things to look for. Before you clear that away, spread them out so there's no set arrangement and ask again how many there are. What you're listening for is to see if your child recognizes that the total hasn't changed just because the arrangement is different. If your child needs to count them again, that's perfectly fine. You're just trying to get a handle on what he or she knows at this point. Work with numbers up to five in this way and then you can add more counters and see how it goes. Most people can recognize up to about six things, um, particularly if they are arranged in a certain way. That makes it easier to count. But expect that once you pass five, your child may very well need to count each one. That's fine. Again, watch and see how she approaches the task. Is the child able to, able to keep her place? Is there an error in counting the same one twice? Really important thing to look for is one-to-one -one matching. In other words, for every number I say, I touch one object or I count one object. So one, two, three, four, five, that's one-to-one. -one. Especially as the set gets larger, some kids will tend to go faster either with the moving objects or with, with the numbers they're saying. So you might get something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. If that's going on with your child, take time to practice one number and moving each one as you say the number helps. One number, one object. That's one-to-one -one matching. Again, you can practice rearranging them and see if your child knows that the total is still the same. Another thing to practice this is to ask your child to count out a certain number. So if you say, count out four. See if your child is doing one, two, three, four, or perhaps your child can take them out in a group and recognize that it's four. If it's a larger number, let's say seven, and you have four out, 
Does your child start over? Five. Do you have seven? One, two, three, four, five. How many do you have now? Is it seven? One, two, three, four, five, six. No, seven. An interesting thing is that after your child has counted out the given number, in this case seven, if you ask her, so how many do you have? You might be surprised to see her go back and count them all again. It seems obvious to us that the last number you say when you're counting tells you how many there are in all. That's not obvious to kids when they first start. So if your child goes back and counts them again, that's perfectly fine. It's just something to note. So now that you have some idea of where your child is with counting, let's look at some ways to practice. A good place to start is with your fingers. So practice showing a number and see if your child just knows that's two, that's four. If your child needs to touch and count, that's perfectly fine. But the goal is to recognize that this is four without counting. That's called subitizing when you just know what a number is. Show numbers, the same numbers, in different ways. So four could also be like this. It could be like this. All of these are fine. Seven can be five and two. It could also be four and three. The idea is for your child to recognize that this is seven no matter how I show it. Again, if your child needs to touch and count, that's fine. Don't forget zero. Zero is an important number. It means none at all. So put that in there as well. Something else you probably have around the house is some dice. The little dots on the dice, or pips, are great for practicing recognizing small numbers. So when you roll the dice, of course I keep rolling ones, you want your child to be able to recognize that that is a six without counting. Dice always have the numbers in the same pattern, so they come to learn six is three and three. So you can play games where you just take turns rolling the dice and saying who has what number. You might want to take the whiteboard and write it down as you go. So if you roll a six and I roll a one, we can then talk about which number is more or which number is less. Let's go back to those foam squares we were looking at earlier. One of my favorite activities to do is to put these squares in order. Whoops. And then connect the number that I see, or the numeral, with how many. So I'll just work with five right now, but you could do the same thing and go up to ten. Ask your child to build above the number that number of pennies or counters. You might need to straighten up the piles a little bit, but I would let your child do it so that they're practicing the counting. That's what we're after here. Notice as you move on up to some of the larger numbers, if your child is recognizing that it's three or four, or if he has to go back and count. Again, either way is okay. That's why we're practicing. So I'll stop at five. If you have enough pennies or counters, you can certainly go right on up to ten. And then I would stop and talk about what you see. You might start by asking your child, what do you notice about the stacks of pennies? You might hear something like, well, this stack has more, or this stack is taller than this stack. More specifically, this stack has one more than the one before it. This stack has one more than the one before it, and one less than the one that comes after it. Another important idea while you've got these stacks out is to make sure your child understands that within a set of five, you also have all the numbers that come before it. So in other words, five also has four in it. It has three in it. 
it has a 2 in it, it has a 1 in it. Again, each number contains all the numbers that come before it. This is, be is going to become important when we start taking apart numbers and putting them back together, when we start adding numbers and subtracting numbers. Another thing you can do to practice counting is to take some of those same foam squares, or in this case I have part of an index card, and make numbers, a certain number on them, again working just with numbers up to 10. These cards have the numbers that look similar to the dice patterns. Some of these do and some of them don't. You want your child to recognize how many are shown. Um, no matter what way they're arranged. So an activity you can do with this is to match the numeral with the quantity, so, or the amount. So here's a five, does not look like the dice. Here's another five. This is one, and so on. Work again with the smaller numbers first, and then work up to the larger numbers. These are a little tricky to count just because they're small, so for that reason you might want to work with something a little larger. These are just index cards cut in half. These particular tiles, I actually have three ways to show three, four ways to show four, five ways to show five, etc. That's not necessary, it's just kind of an idea. You can also set them out randomly and ask your child to find two tiles or two squares that show the same number. You can also practice building the number. Here's an eight. Can you build eight with the pennies or the counters that you're using? Another thing that you might have around the house, and if you don't, I recommend that you get some, is a set of dominoes. The dominoes that we're going to be looking at today are called double six dominoes, because the highest domino you'll find will have six dots or six pips on both ends. These are using the same patterns as you see on the dice, so again, we're practicing subitizing or just recognizing the number without counting them. Here's an activity you can do with your child that will help to develop the idea of more or less. So this is an activity you can play with the dominoes. What you're going to do is turn over a domino and say what you see, first of all. I have six, and you have? I have three. You want to sit side by side, so I'll keep score here. And we're going to build that number. So I'm going to build six, and you're going to build three. Four, five, six. I can build it in the pattern that I see on the domino, but I don't have to. My partner here seemed to just know that was three. I didn't see or hear any counting, so she must just recognize three. Next thing is who has more, six or three? You would have more. I have more. I'm gonna write the number, six and three, and then I get to keep that domino because I had more. And then we'll turn over the next one. Oh. Build that number. I've already done. You're already there. Watch and see what your child does when this happens. Does he recognize that three is less than six and just needs to take some off? If he needs to start over with one, that's okay too. It just depends where your child is. So, who has more? Neither of us. We, we have the do. same. So we'll put that up there. Three is the same or equal to three. And we'll try another one. Oh, I have zero. Two is one less. And so you I have two. Have to take one off. So this time, two is more than zero. I didn't even write down my last numbers, did I? We had three and three. Now we have two and zero. And you win that domino. 
So again, what we're practicing here is connecting what we see and what we say to how many it actually is and what it looks like when you write. We're also talking now about more and less. You can play this game with the winner is the person who has more, but it's perfectly fine and I would suggest you also play with who has less. So let's just change up right in the middle and say the winner is the person who has less. Who would that be? What do you see? I see four. Well, four is greater than three. Four so. is more than three. So which one is less? Three. Three is less. So you get the domino in this case. So this is, again, just practice connecting the different ideas. There's no set number of dominoes to use, but you want to say it, see it, build it, and then compare. Okay, let's look at some card games. In looking around my house for some cards, I found, if you need this, a deck of cards. Bicycle, nice brand of cards, and uh, when I started looking at them, I realized the Four of Hearts had a bite out of it. But I also noticed on this particular deck that there was a rectangle in the middle that showed how many. So I cut them apart. And I call this my broken deck. So here are just the diamonds. And I can use these also for practicing how many do I see and connecting it with the number. So I might ask you to find the one that shows six. That was quick. Did you just know it was six? I didn't see you counting. I just knew that was six. Okay, and then I can match that up with the numeral six if I want to. Um, can you find seven? Oh, we'll have to do some counting for that one. Here's five, six, seven. Oh, that's interesting. So you saw it as five and two more? Five and two more, because that oh. five is the same shape as what's on oh, yeah. my dice. That looks like the dice. I see what you're saying. You know, I didn't see it that way. I saw the six, the three on each side, and then one more. So it's good to have these conversations with your child as you're doing it. And of course, you can do the opposite. You can say, find the card that has a certain number, or you can say, what number is this? So that's just practicing another way of how to associate how many you see with what you see and hear and say. Okay. You can play the same numbers. Uh, the same numbers. You can play the same games that we did before. You can play 1 to 10 with these same cards. Or you can do just the small ones. Let's play a version of... <clears throat> do you know how to play memory? I do know how to play memory. Okay, let's do that. We're going to use just 1 through 5. So that's those. Get these out of the way. And I think these are all one through five. So we can set them out. If I'm using all four suits, that's going to give me 20 cards. I would not go more than 20 cards. If you want to go with the numbers one through 10, then I would just use two suits. You can use the regular playing cards as well. That's perfectly fine. But the, the nice thing about my broken deck is I don't have the numerals, so I'm looking, the focus is more on counting. Okay, so you can go first. You turn over two cards <coughs> and see if they have the same number. What do you see? I see five and two, so not the same. Okay, and I want you to say the numbers as you play because it's more than just recognizing, oh, you have more, or oh, that's not a match. The idea here is recognizing how many. So I'll start up here in this corner. If I can turn it over. A one and a three. Not a match. And so on. When you get a match, you get to keep both cards. Ooh, how's your memory? A three and a three. Good. So my partner got two threes, so she gets to go again. And that's the game of memory. You can also play, oh wow, you're on a roll now. 
You can also play War, more peacefully known as Top It, where you have a deck of cards and you are just seeing who has more. The person who has more gets to keep both cards. So again, you can play that with just the low numbers or you can go all the way up to 10. This, again, it's just a regular deck of cards with the numbers removed. If you, your cards don't look like that, you can just cut off the part that shows the number. So there are lots of ways that you and your child can practice counting. But don't stop there. Count everything. Count how many pairs of socks you have. Count those odd socks that have no matches. Count how many Cheerios are left in your bowl. Have your child count out crackers. Have your child help with counting to set the table. Count everything, everywhere. Count up and count back. You will see lots of improvement if you do. Thank you.